David Broderick is a software engineer. He happens to work at one of the world's most sophisticated telescope facilities, the Compact Array at Narrabri in northern New South Wales. So he took up astronomy as a hobby with this do-it-yourself kit. This looks like the wonkiest clothesline I've ever seen. What is it? This is actually part of a kit for listening to radio waves from outer space. This part of the kit is the antenna and these metallic wires sense the weak radio waves and convert them into an electrical signal uh, which then goes to a radio receiver that takes the weak electrical signal and boosts it up to a level that we can actually hear. So these kits were actually designed for use by students for listening to radio waves from space. What on earth is that? That's actually Jupiter. Uh, Jupiter is quite a strong radio source at low frequencies. So that's the sound of outer space? Yeah, that's exactly right. That's, that's from you know, a real planet. So what are we listening to now? Well, although it sounds like Jupiter, that's actually not. That's a fluorescent light flickering on and off. So how can you tell what's what? The kind of radio telescope that we've got here is actually what's called an interferometer. Now, essentially what we can do is measure the, the time delay between when a radio wave reaches this antenna and when it reaches the second antenna that we've got about 100 metres away. If the source of the radio waves is an astronomical object, then that time delay will change over the period of the day, whereas if the source of the noise is, say, some interference from here on Earth, then that time delay won't change. While Dave started experimenting with these radio antennas for fun, he just happened to capture a world first in astronomy, recording the biggest solar flare man has seen in November 2003. Well, it was the biggest solar flare ever recorded since measurements started, say, in the sort of mid-1970s. The flare was so powerful it overwhelmed the multi-million dollar satellites owned by US space agency NASA that are supposed to record them. Here you can see some artefacts and these come about because this flare was so large that the sensors on the satellite were actually overloaded. That left international experts arguing just how big the solar flare was. So we came up with a number of, of what people in the solar community would call X40, X for extreme solar flare. Now, X40 is absolutely unprecedented. The largest solar flares known are about X20, and, and so this flare has doubled the size of any known solar flare. Certainly billions of one megaton nuclear bombs. Well, I also worked out that it would be more energy than if you filled the Pacific Ocean five times over with oil. It must be nice as a, a backyard astronomer to be able to actually beat NASA. Absolutely. At Narrabri, the solar flare registered as a dramatic fall in radio waves. The sun really let go and you can see this huge decrease in the amount of flux that we recorded. Mm -hmm. It's a case of being in the right place at the right time. This solar flare happened only a few minutes after sunrise here, so if the solar flare had happened a few minutes earlier, we wouldn't have recorded the data because the sun would have been set. This particular area on the sun was just about to rotate out of view. Solar flares are explosions in the sun's atmosphere. Because the sun is constantly rotating and there's strong convection currents within the sun, basically the sun's boiling like a pot of boiling water. Now, basically what happens during a solar flare is that the magnetic field reconfigures very quickly. Billions of tonnes of ionised, of super hot ionised gas gets ejected from the sun during these events. While the sun is 150 million kilometres away, solar flares are so powerful they can have a dramatic impact all the way down here on Earth. These explosions in the sun's atmosphere carry right down to the Earth's upper atmosphere. That's called the ionosphere, which is as close as 50 kilometres from the ground. Oh, basically can fry electronics and stop satellites working altogether, so you completely lose some communications. And electricity? Uh, so it can affect things like the power grids by uh, induced currents and, and things like that. So it can have a big effect on infrastructure on the Earth. So this is actually a measurement of the effects that the solar flare has on the ionosphere. You can see that the largest effect happens directly below the area where the sun is. However, the whole sunlit side of the Earth is actually affected. 
Professional astrophysicist Dr Stephen Tingay encouraged David to publish his findings in a prestigious scientific journal. It could be another decade or more before this record is beaten as the Sun moves into a period of low activity at the start of a new 11-year cycle. What does this say, I guess, to the, the backyard amateur astronomer? Oh, I think it's quite a positive message, actually, that um, you know, with a few hundred dollars worth of equipment and a few bits of wire in the backyard, that you can do science that a, a multi-billion dollar satellite cannot do. A world first discovery is not bad for just a hobby. Not too bad.